Peter back with Ramblin' Jack. I watched that Bushcraft channel. Really cool. And they, 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 don't, they don't talk, right? It's like saw, hammer, install, saw, hammer, install, feed dog, saw, hammer, install. It's like, it's like porn for people who want to live in the woods in the snow. You know, install hammock, install table, make perfect little notches in the legs of the table, chop wood, make fire, make fire good, make fire warm, make place wonderful, like a little palace for a man. Dog eats now, film closes, backpack is loaded, homeward bound. And it's like, I mean, it, it reads like porn in a way, right? It's like got a script. The people making the YouTube videos, they get the shot walking. Maybe they get the shot of themselves waking up like, oh, what a surprise. The camera is perfectly framed. I feel like a NASA astronaut. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so on and so on. And like, what you don't see in any of these bushcraft videos is like, hey, this guy spends all day long outside um, and he has lots of things to say. <laughs> and uh, you might want to, you might want to check it out. But you're not going to get your hit. That was a very creepy car that went by. You yeah. know, some kind of electric thing. You expect it from this road. Some people, they come down this road. And that guy looked like he was right out of the 1950s and very serious looks on their faces. Like you just want to feel a little out of place as they go by. Like they're police officers. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry for being here. Right? My, in, my mind instantly goes when I see them or their energy is, what do I look like? Um, okay. Because like they scan you pretty good, right? It's like, oh, I'm dirty. I've got outdoor clothes and a backpack. I may or may not escape um, the deduction of homeless person, traveler, itinerant waif, and or someone who doesn't belong here. So, <laughs> prove it, you know? Uh, so I, I should, they should really basically, people to whom the only thing that should be done is to take out my driver's license and show them where I live and to show them a hydro bill. Something, the same thing you do to go get a check at the welfare office, you know? while still sustaining very strong and deprecating feelings and connotations about the fact that you really don't deserve this, you should just go get a job. This is not supposed to be nice. It's not the love office. It's just the welfare office. We don't care about how happy you are, just the welfare of our bank accounts and our society that maybe needs to defend itself from people like you, the most vulnerable people who haven't really taken with the same enthusiasm or ability as others to a five day work week and everything that goes along with that. Even though none of us really know what goes along with that because nobody's telling, because no one sustains an interest or a voice in doing so, which in some sense is more suspicious than the fact that your underwear is showing and you have three babies on your arm and you need $300 to eat this week, you know, and you're fat and we don't like you. So what are the most important factors here, right? And the discriminating power of human beings and what we assume or want to about the people who are being paid to take care of them or you or me. And, uh, you know, Canada is a very social system sort of part of the world and we all enjoy it in our way. I know I do. I have no right to complain in that sense, you know. Thank you, Canada and all your hardworking people. Um, I, you know, I, I owe it some respect. I do. Some loyalty. I mean, I wouldn't fight for you, but I wouldn't fight for the other guy. <laughs> you know? I'd be rooting for you at home in my bomb shelter. <laughs> Go Canada. Like you root for your football teams and all the other representative sex organs that live out the catharsis of a people who are not, for all their employment, ever fully satisfied about what they do in life. And that's not my fault that you need to engage in infantile fixations in sports in order to pay and compensate yourself adequately for how the rest of your life is so adequately appointed. And nothing's wrong with that. It's proportions. Imagine you're building a deck and you're one degree off and the rain just falls to the center and someone makes a thousand dollars a minute fixing it for you. But yeah, your whole life is meant to have a tiny little discrepancy in it that makes everything more expensive no matter how hard you try. A kind of mass inflation of human difficulty 
that you're so busy proving to yourself, your daddy, and everyone else you're good at compensating for, that you forgot how to talk about it enough to fully sustain the costs or to know what they are beyond that thing which is instinct with mud and dirt and bone, that unless we talk about it, she'll never be known. And we'll take it to our graves.